Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a new edition of Eclectica. I am Seven. We have Drew, we have Cece, and our special guest, Regine Sawyer. How are you doing? Good. How are Good. you? All right, hanging in there. In a partial coma, I'm letting you guys know in advance. Um, <laughs> I'm a little bit out of it because I bought the PS4 on Black Friday. I went and finally took the leap. Last night, I stayed up. I Basically, I took my blanket, I sat on my couch, and I played PlayStation until about 4.30, 5 a.m., and then I eventually passed out with the, with the PlayStation on. So I'm a bit out of it today. So just for warning... Oh, oh Lord! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Been playing Overwatch, Uncharted Four, and I'm loading right now. As we speak, I'm loading Batman: Arkham Knight, so it's oh. going to be a bit. I have no idea how my rest of my life is going to plan out. Right now, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're gonna be with Arkham Knight for a minute. Yeah, oh, no, man. all these games. And then I wanted to borrow like The Last of Us from one of my friends, so I'm just like, yeah, I have nothing else going on in my life right now. So. I can't with you, Drew. I just can't. Yeah. <laughs> So, Regine, thank you so, so Regine, much for joining us today. Thank, yeah, you're yeah. incognito. We don't get to see your, your yeah. face today. Yeah, so, I'm incognito today. I'm incognito. Incogni yeah, so, Sorry. But, um, <laughs> so for anyone that <laughs> doesn't know who Regine Sawyer is, um, this woman is not only a comic book creator, she's a CEO. She's, I mean, you do everything under the sun with your company as far as putting it yeah. together, correct? Yeah, it feels like it sometimes. Um, I'm, I have two two organizations. Well, one, I have my publishing company, Lock It Down Productions, mm -hmm. which I've had for 10 years. And I publish comics such as The Rippers, Ice Witch, and Eating Vampires. Um, I also am the founder and coordinator of the Women in Comics Collective International. Mm -hmm. And that was born about four and a half years ago. And we have a comic book convention. We host workshops, panel discussions, art shows, the whole the whole gamut. So we do a lot of fun stuff for the community. Wow. Sounds alive. Sounds busy. So how'd you get into this whole thing? Like, I mean, there's not that many people that say, I'm going to have my own company and, and do what you're doing. So how did you get into it? Well, first and foremost, I'm a big comic book collector. I've mm -hmm. been collecting comics since I was about um, six or seven. And uh, I used to like just create my own stories and I would um, draw them out and all that great stuff. And once I got to uh, college, I sort of put it to the side. And then once I entered the workforce, uh, I'm a classically trained chef and I've been working in the food industry as a manager. And I was in the middle of that career when I just said to myself, you know what, you only live once. Let me see if I can do something with this. And I actually met a man at a comic book store who overheard me talking to one of my friends about um, getting into the comic book industry. And he said, well, I have an independent company. Why don't you send me what you have and we'll see where we can go from there. And uh, once I sent him my stuff, uh, he was just like, well, why don't you edit some of my scripts? And he had like, a, he had um, notebooks, handwritten, filled with text and whatnot of, of comic book scripts. And I transcribed them Plus, I edited them, typed them up, the whole nine yards. And from there, I started doing other things. I uh, would review su uh, submissions from artists. I would uh, get together um, like uh, events with the artist, introduce them to him, uh, get convention tables for him. And uh, finally, I said, after a year and a half, I can do this for myself. I'm not going to do it for someone else. So in, at the end of 2007, I started Lock It Down Production. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And how do you, as far as women, in, hmm. how do you balance creative mindset and the business mindset? Because a lot of creatives, that tends to be the challenge of going yeah. into business mode and creative mode. Like, how are you able to to do that, or advice how well, to do that for other people? Well, for me personally, I mean, I started off as a creative, but then I was going into another industry, and I was taking a lot of business classes finance, um, doing business plans and all that stuff. And I just applied that to comics. Mm -hmm. So that's how I that's how I did it. And on top of that, I educated myself on the business of, of comics. Of it's like it's not just about, you know, slapping some words and some pictures together. There's an actual business to it. And a lot of artists uh, 
they don't educate themselves about that. And that's how they get really like screwed up in terms of contracts and all that, you know, technical stuff. So it's yeah. very, very important to like, you don't have to necessarily take classes, but definitely like get a, a bunch of books about not just ma the making of comics, but the business of comics. So that's yeah. what I did for myself. Yeah. And these days it very much is like the business element is heavy because everything's getting turned into film properties now. And yes. comic books and comic book properties are a hot commodity at the moment. So yeah. it's a multi-billion dollar industry. So people are going to have to be like versed in one, like how you just operating within it, but also learning the ins and outs so they don't get screwed over themselves. Because right. that's what yeah. happens yeah. to a lot of creators and stuff. So it's, it's yeah. great that you're, that you're into that. That's great. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. So using that as a springboard and the industry element of it. So we've got a li little bit more news on uh, the latest property that's going to be turned into a film. Uh, casting news. Angela Bassett, like the chick as a kid. Let me just, let me just, I can't express this to like clearly <laughs> enough. As a kid, watching her films, like that was the core definition of what I thought of when you think of a woman. So it's like seeing her being announced as when i first heard angela bass is going to be on black panther i'm like she's going to be black panther's mom she's going to be ramonda she's going to be ramonda i'm like there it is i already knew i already knew so that's a epic piece of news we're we always joke like about a hey, is ryan coogler the director just getting the all the a-listers in hollywood all the black a-listers and then just <laughs> slapping them into this movie i still don't think so even though you guys didn't, you know, said, so, well, don't forget, Drew Forrest Whitaker's also in. And I'm just like, damn, that's, that's right. <laughs> so I'm telling you right now, if Morris Chestnut gets introduced as part of being part of the cast, I'll be like, yeah, I think at this point we are kind of just going for every black actor right, on Earth. Right. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing because you do want to have that, I don't know, that, that star-studded like feel to it. But like we're also saying, like our concern is not detracting away from Black Panther's core. Chadwick Boseman killed it right. when he came onto the scene in Civil War. He's killed it with his other roles too. He's a great actor. Right. So I think just ha having his like intensity, his his steez, his like talent as an actor with Angela Bassett as playing his mother. And mind you, in the comics, she's not his biological mother. She's his stepmother. Doesn't matter. She's a mother in every way that matters. She's a great character. She serves as more often than not his like moral center, his compass. You know, if he's he looks he's a king, he lords over people. And there's some days where he's just like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I don't know what to do. And then he looks to his mom and she's just like, Well, you need to do this, that, and the third to serve your people. That's like her crux to everything is do what's good for your people. So yeah. that will be that will make for very good scenes, I think the film itself i'm really excited about that so I, um i think that there were a lot of scapegoats that they could have went with mm -hmm. as um to call his mother but i think that personally angela bassett was a good pick she's mm -hmm. she's dipped and dabbled in the sci-fi realm with american horror story mm -hmm. um pretty much like you said even with um with what's love got to do with it and way to exhale for those who are familiar with those classic movies like she had me thinking that she was Tina Turner. It was like there wasn't a better casting of that. I don't think since you know Jennifer Lopez for Selena. So, mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. I think that she'll fit very well into that realm. And she, it's kind of been a long time coming for her, where she started in those, you know, I guess black exploitationist um, roles. But she's like really made herself well rounded, and I think she likes this this mm -hmm. um, this category. Okay. You know, you know yeah. what, Regina, yeah. let me ask you a question. Your character, Ice Witch, mm -hmm. if you had to choose any actress to play Ice Witch, which one would it be? And what was it about the creating of that character that um, that essence you think really needs to be wrung out by that particular actress? Let's see if you can answer that. Well that's well, actually, answer. no, I no, I have an answer because her what? look is is based on an actress. I um, thought I had her you. Her look is based on um, <laughs> Sydney Poitier's daughter. 
Oh, oh stop it. Yeah, that's what, yeah, she, her look is based on her. So for me, that is Ice Witch. Wow. She is definitely, for me, the embodiment of that character because she has, she has the, the quiet strength that um, Ice Witch would need mm-hmm. to be betrayed properly. Mm. Without wow. even seeing the character, I instantly went to uh, Zoe Kravitz. <laughs> Cause well, she's know, rat, dude. I don't know. I just like yeah, her. She's yeah. beautiful, like her. but Sydney no, Poitier's dope. daughter can act her butt off. Yeah, like in her. comparison, even though yeah. I love Zoe, don't get it twisted. But Sydney Poitier's daughter. Well, actually, what is um, Sydney Poitier's daughter's first name? Sydney. It it is. That yeah. Is wow. Spell, that was definitely. simple. I think it's spelled with a Y instead of an I. Oh, for some reason, I mm-hmm. thought it would be something else. You know what? We need to see her more. See, that's what I'm talking about. They yeah. keep going with, you know, these... I don't want to name names like I'm trying to down certain actors and actresses mm-hmm. out there, but I would yeah. like to see other people that don't have that much shine but have the chops. It's not yeah. just about we have a large fan base all the time. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Or a perceived and fan historical base. Perspective- Mm-hmm. I don't even think Sidney Poitier gets the the um, recognition he deserves on a grand scale. He definitely doesn't. The yes. acting community knows him. He's like, I want to say two different degrees. He's a household name. Everybody in my right. family knows who Sidney Poitier is. Anyone right. who knows a good film or has even like you know watched, uh, sorry, in the heat of the night mm-hmm. knows right. who he is. So he's known. Yeah, if you're like a movie buff, or if you're in if the you're, black yeah, community, I feel like movie. it's a household name. The first right, time right. I saw it to Sir with Love, I was like, wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That's so a story. <laughs> kind of jumping back to the females in comics. So with your uh, org, Regine, women in, mm-hmm. is, was Women in Comics? Or Women in Comics? It's community? Women in Comics Collective International. Oh, mm-hmm. Okay, there we go. I knew I was going to mess that name up, so I didn't even it's know. Okay. It. It's um, okay. <laughs> it's okay. So right. with actresses like Angela Bassett kind of stepping into these major roles, like it's kind of like... I don't want to say like a beacon, but I would definitely say that for what you and what your organization aims for, this is definitely a good thing, right? Would it not be? Tell us a little more about it. Well, I mean, in terms of a, a wonderful actress, an A-list actress such as herself, portraying um, such an in-depth character is is definitely wonderful. It's wonderful for the uh, film community. And it's yeah, it's good for comics, you know, because you want the right person to portray a character that you love. Um, in terms of the Women in Comics organization, it's about promoting uh, female creators in the industry, mm-hmm. namely female creators of color. Mm-hmm. And um, when we started it four and a half years ago, um, there was just um, eight members initially. We, we were asked to do a panel discussion at random, and we just did it. And from there, people just sort of fell in love with these members one in particular is alisa e martinez who is um afro latino and she's worked in the comic book industry the mainstream comic book industry for 17 years and uh, a lot of people don't know who she is which is very very interesting and she currently is is uh the lead artist on the world of wakanda oh that's her okay i know know yeah yeah that's her um but she she was an artist on iron man she was an artist uh, on Black Panther a, a good 16 years ago. Wow. Mm-hmm. So she's been around for a long time and it's important that people know who she is yeah. and they yeah. see her her face and she actually, she does a lot of workshops um, mm-hmm. with us at um, various um, places across the country. Mm-hmm. So those things are important for people to, to not only see us, but to, um, to also put the face with the work um, especially mm-hmm. in the black community and marginalized communities, it's important that they see that because a lot of kids want to be artists, they want to be writers, and they don't know how to go about it, and yeah. they can't afford to go to a large convention, mm-hmm. and their parents are worried that they're going to have an like, artist as a kid for a kid, and the kid <laughs> is not going to get out of their house and yeah. make any money. Yeah. But here we yeah. are stepping into the community, saying, "Hey, you know, we do make a living doing this. You know, some of us do have two or three jobs, but." Mm-hmm. We are doing something with this. Alisa is one of those artists that she makes a living solely doing comics. Right. Well, I got to say, some of the best artists I've come across in the last five to ten years, they're all on social media. It's like it's opened up this whole new vestige for us where it's like artists can put their stuff on Patreon or Kickstarter and get funded for these different projects. 
mm-hmm. show off their work through, be it through Instagram, be it through Facebook, be it through Twitter. There's all these different avenues that we can play with now. So it's yeah. really just a matter of putting yourself out there and knowing how to essentially reach your audience because they're okay. out there. See some also, oh, absolutely. online for, all the time. Like also, most for, what, for what we do, I want to quickly mention too, and I'll do that every once in a while, um, and I don't do it for everybody, but I really like when I meet these artists and they're actually cool. Like, yeah. Alita, Alita's There's actually a lot cool. Of out there. I agree. There's she, a like, lot she's of really, people. really like down to earth. And if you ask her a question about the industry, if she doesn't mince words, um, you know, she's really, really blunt and she's open to talk to. She's accessible. Um, right. Regine is, I mean, I've been trying to get her as a guest for since we started the show, actually. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. Busy, <laughs> busy lady. But again, down to earth, cool. And um, yeah. I just had to put that out there because there's a lot of people out there that are not warm at all. In, oh, uh, yeah. Right, right. I've had dozens of sit down different artists. Yeah. Talented, but entirely too up themselves. I won't name names. I'm not going to name directly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So before and I guess we went that would to be off my air. Question. Oh, God. Yep. Oh. <laughs> and I guess that would be my question to you, Regina, as, as a woman of color who um, very much looks up to you and is kind of, um in a way trying to follow your footsteps in my own way i'm i'm um more an aspiring his comic historian and then as mm-hmm. you know i do my work with blurcon so i think i had a similar i think i can identify you with you when i kind of broke away from my inner comic fangirl and otaku side um that i felt this sense of pressure to not show it as much because it wasn't i don't know it wasn't attractive or it wasn't i don't know i'm not who are you hanging around what um, <laughs> not attractive. it was it was weird for me because i i started out in the inner city in mm-hmm. dc in the city like back when it was chocolate city and um maybe me being light skin kind of had a something to do with it as well but do you feel or did you ever feel like there was pressure to not be yourself to a degree and what would you say to any young girl who um or young lady who is um trying to make a living off of what they're passionate about no i never felt pressure mainly because my 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 family uh encouraged the nerdiness Uh, My father would read the Sunday funnies to me and my brother and I would buy comics together and he would buy me comic book cards every every Christmas. So it was it was always encouraged um, with my family. My mother may have gotten worried a few (laughs) a couple of times like, oh, my God, this is not girly. And I'm like, so what? Right, um, but you know, but she got, but she got over it because she was an artist herself. So she started taking me to comic book, comic cons, and you know the little dirty ones we have, we used to have in New York City. You know, mm-hmm. we would have like dirty hotels, whatever. My mother would go with me. Yeah. Um, so I never felt that pressure. Thankfully, mm-hmm. I mean, once she realized I wasn't going to change, she was like, whatever. You know. Right. So from so from there, that just went along with me um as an adult um i mean every every i mean every once in a while the only thing that i might have a challenge about is that i am a woman i am a woman of color and i i never necessarily felt like you don't belong but it was more like oh wow you're here too right Mm -hmm. that is interesting and every once in a while i have to check somebody it's very rare but every once in a while i do and but I've never let that stop me. So if I have any advice for anyone, it's, it would definitely just be be yourself. Um, the only person you're responsible to is is yourself, um, as well as the people you care about, but support the people you care about, care about you and care about the person that you are, that you're not going to change, that you're, you're nerdy, a nerd, nerdy until you die, nerdy and blurdy until you die, and that's it. Um, so for me... You are you are who you are. Accept yourself, love yourself, get yourself some comics, and that's it. You know what? You just mentioned about support. Um, I am going to pull a pull up a picture with you at Robert Garrett. Um, uh, I, I did the best way to ask this question of your peers. How do you choose, or um, I guess, guide the 
connections, I guess you should say, or the relationships with other people um, that are doing what you're doing to motivate you to move forward? Um, well, I'm very choosy about okay. uh, my colleagues and my friendships okay. um, within comics. Again, as a, as a woman, a black woman, um, I'm very careful and protective of my space. Okay. And it's important that the people that are in and around me are are focused and about um, being being better, always knowing there's another plateau, helping each other. Um, Robert is one of my my best friends. Um, I met him around the time that I first started in comics, mm -hmm. and he's one of my biggest supporters. And I support him in Exmore Exmore Studios. Um, the ladies of the Women in Comics organization, they reach out. They reach out to me. A lot of them reached out to me, or some of them I met at shows, and they just seem like really, really, really humble people. Um, most of them very, very much are, and they have this huge heart for the community, and that's very important. It's also one of the criteria of being a member. Like you have to care. If you don't, if you only care about yourself, there's the door. Mm. This is <laughs> this is not for you. So it's very important that for me, I surround myself with like-minded people. Sounds about right. That's good. Yeah, good, good. Oh, can you um, tell us about your convention? That sounds like fun. Sure. Um, Women in Comics Con um, started last year. Um, this year was our second year. We're already planning for, for next year. Um, our only male member, Ray Felix, who's absolutely awesome, is the organizer and founder of Bronx Heroes Comic Con. And he's also uh, the reason why we first had that first panel, that first Women in Comics panel. He had invited us. Um, and he just said to me, he's like, Regine, we should do Women in Comics Con. Let's not do Bronx Heroes. Let's just do Women in Comics Con. And I'm like, what? Are you... Um, what? I don't know if anyone's going to come. <laughs> like, I don't know if anyone's going to come. He's like, no, let's just, let's just see. Let's just see. So last year we did one like really, really last minute, but a good amount of people came. I was kind of shocked. And then Hi. this year uh, we had better planning. Uh, we, we had a pre-party and, and everything. And I was, I was in total shock how many people came. I, we had a clicker. I had ladies manning the door and we just saw, we're, we have it at a, at a library in the Bronx. And awesome. people were outside, like waiting. I'm like, really? You're waiting to come in here to see us? Like, this is crazy. Yeah, but you can't. You can't be shocked when you see more people showing up to the lesser known. <laughs> Our other oh. uh, co-host, Charles, he's not here with us tonight. Mm. His, right. his rants about <laughs> Comic Con, the big cons, dude. It's <laughs> they're a bit too much now, and it's yeah. like you have to pay X amount of dollars to get in, and there's no chance, there's no guarantee right. that you'll get to see everything that you want to see. So right. people want alternate outlets, especially like, you know, we were just talking uh, nerds of color, you know, people that are trying to get into the industry but don't quite know where they fit in. Mm. Right. They want to go out and support and see other like-minded people like how you like Regine, but it's like, where do you go for those when right. one, they're charging you $100, $200 to go maybe no, see a couple of exhibits? Right. We have a little stuff. So well, one it's thing I'll say one thing I'll say that there's an awesome app called Nerd Out, and it's act, it was actually created by one of our members, and it has just a whole host of events that are going on across the country, mm -hmm. nice. and it's a it's it's a scheduler and a calendar, and it's really nice. really really dope. So I encourage anyone who's looking for something outside of the huge cons to check mm -hmm. out Nerd App. Um, but that's also the reason why we do Women in Comics Con. As I said, we go into the community communities that cannot afford to go to New York Comic Con or mm -hmm. San Diego Comic Con. Mm -hmm. we, we, we have these events so people can, can meet us, meet professionals, find out how they can get into the industry, meet mm -hmm. people that they wouldn't have access to if, if, if they went or tried to get into a larger con. And not only maybe they can't afford it, but they can't get in because all the tickets are gone. Yeah. So we do like stuff once a month. So Women in Comics Con encompasses everything that we do. So we have workshops um, during the con. We also have uh, film screenings because we have some, we have some um, web series creators that are part of our organization. We also awesome. do panel discussions and stuff. And we also do an off-site art show. There is a, there's a location right outside of the library that we use for art shows. So if you you know, you're, you're waiting to go to a panel and you, you can just go to the art show real quick and then 
walk a block and come back to the library. So mm-hmm. we want everyone to have a full encompassing experience when they go to Women in Comic Con. And plus, we're super fun. So and it's free. It's free. It's free for nice. anyone to come. Hold on one yeah. second. Hold on one second. And um, want everyone to know that um, you could check us out on um, scvnetwork.com. And then he goes blank. And you could also check us out on uh, cable. <laughs> all the, like all the cable information will be there. And um, you're watching Eclectica. Yep, so that's awesome. Um, I'm definitely going to download that and definitely yes. let people know about it. In fact, we were just yeah. talking before the show about good ideas yeah. to let people know about stuff. So that sounds that sounds excellent. Yeah. Good day. And you had this like big pause before you were about to like announce the info. I'm just like, did he just? Yes, I did because because you froze. <laughs> Like on some straight cliffhanger, so like, why did he do that? No, I have to give the information. Crap! Don't make me do that. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's wow. That oh, was, and, uh, oh, before we go, I do have to ask about Super Seek. How did that come about? Yeah, Super Seek is not my book. It's an awesome book by one of our members named Eileen Kerr, and um, she she she's really awesome. She's a screenwriter. And she's out in L.A. and someone like sort of challenged her like, oh, you need to do something with someone that's Sikh. And so she took her time to do research and and uh, she was going to write a screenplay. And then as she was coming up with ideas, she decided to write a comic. And then as she was doing her research on being Sikh, she actually converted. And from there, she created Super Seek. She won a Seek superhero, wow. and it's and it's it's like it's sort of like a, he's like a Seek Bond. Like he's like a Seek James Bond. He's he's nice. super dope. He's super dope. Nice. And I think she just released issue four. That's what's up. That's cool. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Have you seen? Have you heard about Captain Seek America, the cosplayer? Yes. Yes, I love him. <laughs> see Captain America. I take that back. See Captain America. <laughs> see Captain America. <laughs> All right. Well, we're at our 28 limit. Um, so we do have to end this episode. Um, but, Regine, we definitely would love to have you come back. And um, maybe you can come in studio. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, why don't you get Sounds to see like you this uh, next time? Yeah. I would Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I will take a trip to New York for you, Regine. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, guys. It's incognito, incognito. <laughs> Thank you so much, Cece. Thank you for joining right. us. And Drew, always. <laughs> and our guest, Regine Sawyer, and I am Seven. You're watching Eclectica, and we'll see you the same time live. Have a good week. Awesome. Bye. And then we run the music. Eclectica. <laughs> <laughs>